So, you clicked on this video so you can see how to run a Minecraft server. Well, doesn't look like I'm running a Minecraft server right at the time, but that's okay. So anyway, what we've got going on here is we're going to install MineOS. You've probably heard of MineOS, but if you haven't, it's a great program. Basically what it does is it installs an operating system onto a computer, and you can run a Minecraft server right off of the computer. All right. Now you're saying, well, wait a minute. I can just do that, download the jar file, get Java installed and all that good garbage, and then run it that way. Well, in my experience, that runs, and it runs good, but you kind of have to have babysit it all the time. This program, you don't have to babysit. It's just like if you were going to pay one of those fancy Minecraft hosting services, but you have, hard, you have access to the hardware. It's exactly how it is. You don't have to sit there. You don't have to babysit it. You can even access it and control this thing from your phone. How cool is that? Your phone's always on you. It's always on the internet. Why not be able to make it control your Minecraft server with a nice ingenious little web user interface? Yes, a web user interface that doesn't require you to have a keyboard and a stupid mouse connected up to a computer all the time. That sounds like a great idea, doesn't it? Anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing installed. We're going to use my, I'm sorry, we're going to use the Oracle VM, VM VirtualBox program that is in my other video. If you haven't seen that video, go ahead and watch that one first. It'll show you how to go ahead and install this thing. Once you get it installed, it's all downhill from there. So let's go ahead and get that thing installed. All right, so we just got done installing mine OS into a virtual box. All right, uh, link in the description of where you can get the, uh, the ISO for mine OS. All right, so anyway, so after you install it and you reboot it, it comes back to this screen right here. Now for the root account, root is just like the administrator account in Windows. All right, if you guys are familiar with whoever's watching this, if you're familiar with Linux, then you should know all about the root account. All right, so anyway, pretty much never forget this password. If you forget all the passwords in the world, make sure you don't forget this one, okay? Anyway, so I'm just going to type in a password right here, okay? So it'd be nice if I actually select it on the screen, wouldn't it? All right, punching in again. Whoops. All right. Now the MC account is the account that you're going to be using most of the time, okay? Unless you're doing a lot of FTP stuff, then it's just easier to use the root account because that way you can write to whatever you want, okay? Anyway, MC account. All right. Now, I don't really ever do this one. I don't really like it all that much, but pretty much what this is, is allows you domain management and all that stuff from turnkey.com or turnkeylinux.com.dns. But anyway, if you happen to be installing this thing on already like say Windows Home Server or Windows Server 2012 R2 Essentials Edition, or you have like that Essentials thing on there where you can access anywhere, if you already have a DNS, a, a dynamic DNS or anything like that, you don't really have to do all this. You just already have something pointed at your network and it's good to go. So I don't ever really mess around with this. So I'm just going to skip it. Uh, let's see here. I don't really ever mess with this kind of stuff anyway. Uh, you don't really need to have an email or anything like that. It automatically installs updates. So just keep going. All right. Yeah, you do want it to install the updates. Obviously, you want it to install updates. All right. Uh oh. Okay. Anyway. All right. So anyway, moving right along. This is it. This is this is it. This is everything. This is pretty much headless. Okay. So anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here. Let's open up a, a Google Chrome. We're gonna go right here. All right. So you want to go HTTPS colon slash slash and in my case this is the internal address so you're not going to be able to actually ac access this from outside but anyway so 192.168.1.173 okay 
and then you're going to do the port number. Now this is real important. You can't just type in this address and expect to go there. You got to put the little colon in there to tell it what port you're going to attach it to. All right. So right there, click that. It's not private. I know it's going to come up and say your your internet browser is going to come up and it's going to freak out. It's all right. Proceed. Proceed, proceed. All right. Now this address is you you want the not the address the user you want MC and then that password that you typed in for MC okay and I know that it says the password right there I'm just typing in some kind of random hooply hoop on there just to see if it'll work all right but anyway this is it all right so now let's just come over here and we just hit the enter that's it you don't even need to worry about this anymore get it out of here minimize it just don't close it because it's not gonna work anyway this is now the user interface doesn't this look a whole lot nicer than just a than just a a console right there? It tells you what kind of servers you got running, how many players you got online, your uptime. We've been up for I don't know, probably about four, four minutes, five minutes, whatever. And how much RAM you got free. Alright? I put six gig of RAM for this thing, so it kind of gives you an idea about how much this operating system is actually using. So anyway, we want to make a server. That's why you watch this video, right? You want to make a server. Okay, so server name. Let's just call this MC1. Whatever. Give it your port address. Now, this is important. The original address is 25565. Okay? Server IP. Don't put anything in there unless you want to really you know, mess something up. Max players. How many max players you want? Level name. Level seed. Difficulty. What do you want on there? Eh, normal. Whatever. Game mode. Do you want to have a, everyone that attaches this thing creative survival or adventure? So whatever. Let's just do survival for right now. All right. Level level type default. I just leave it alone. Okay. Let's just create the server. No, oops, it doesn't like that. Okay. Alpha numerics underscores. No spaces, dummy. Okay. So it just created the server. All right. Now we need to create a profile so this server knows what the hell it's doing. So go to profiles, all right, Mojang, and you could do all this. We're also going to do a Feed the Beast one. That one's really cool. There's a, some stuff that I found that people don't exactly tell you about the Feed the Beast on this particular operating system. So anyway, what we're going to do is just get the original Mojang one, okay? And we're going to show all, and it doesn't seem to be connected to the internet. What's going on here? I don't know why it's not connected to the internet. All right. Well, shit. All right, enough of the goofing up. Got it to work. It just needed to restart. I don't know. Something happened. Whatever. Anyway, so back to what I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted by this piece of garbage right here. All right. Seems to have some kind of problem that it just needed to restart. Anyway, shouldn't have any more problems after that. Maybe it just needed a restart for some kind of update. Whatever. This thing automatically installs updates. Maybe it was doing something right that quick. But anyway, so you can go straight to, you know, whatever you want here. Mojang, releases, snapshots, older versions, don't matter. Whatever, whatever you want, all right? And you could only download it or show all. Well, we want the, let's just say we want this guy right here. Okay, this one right here. Mostly because I've already got this one installed on my Minecraft deal. So I don't want to download another one if I don't have to. So click download. Pretty simple, right? This is going to take no time at all. See how fast it goes? Download successful. All right, now you just leave this alone. Go back to your server status alright so or you can just go to your dashboard and then this is the server we just had created right click on that alright change profile we just downloaded this one right click it change run and jar to right here this is what it is how much memory you want to give this thing you want to make it run now here's the thing is, is I always like to make this thing run uh, it, the exact energy size okay so you know anybody that really knows how how things work in a computer three gig is never really three gig it's like three 
0 0.5 fucking whatever, okay? But anyway, so let's just do a little calculation here. So I know that one gigabyte is 1024, all right? So let's just say we want 1024, but we want four gig, all right? So four gig is 4096. So you want 4096. 4096, all right? So this tells it the maximum amount that it's gonna have, maximum amount of memory it's gonna have, all right? So with that, you wanna start this on boot. So when, this, when the virtual machine starts, it will automatically start this for you. Turn the computer on, automatically boot. Don't gotta babysit it. Sounds great, don't it? All right, so anyway, this is what you want, all right? Now you're just gonna hit start and it's gonna say, now I know that you're gonna to have to accept the EULA, the end user license agreement. So you click this, give it a second. Yep, it's gonna pop up, say, hey dummy, you didn't accept the EULA. All right, accept the EULA. All right, and then click start. Give it a second, all right? Now it even gives you a nice little log right here. So you know the terminal deal that you'd have if you were to run this the old fashioned crappy way? Here it is, it's right there, it's going. works great there it is it's done all right so now let's just minimize this okay minimize let's go to minecraft all right so i'm already logged into minecraft all right so let's play i don't want to add a profile uh, go away which user? That one there. Okay. Hopefully it didn't just download the new version. But we can double check to see here. Server status. One one. Ah, oh, I did do it in a new version. Alright. That's okay. Let's just see here. So this is my server that I've got running for quite some time now. So anyway, let's just do, let's do this. Let's join, oh, not that one. I don't want you to see my new server. So let's add a, let's add a server, okay? So it's just Minecraft server. Now you're gonna type in that address. It's actually gonna be this address right here, okay? Now if you were outside the network and you set up your ports just right and you set your router to allow you to go through this port then you type in whatever your external IP address would be okay and that's a, probably a video for a different day how to set up a you know a dynamic DNS hoopla on there so you can access anywhere on the planet and let your buddy at your house at his house connect to your server but anyway so this is what we're gonna do was that one seven three and it's the default it's the default port so we don't have to worry about it so click done There it is. That's the server we just made. That's this guy right here. That's this guy. Isn't that cool? That's nice. Let's refresh that. I don't like that music. That music is quite a near like it's quite irritating. Go away, music. Alright. See if it'll let me connect. I don't know if it will, because I got a different version here. If it does, it's gonna be awesome. Hey, check it out. Check it out. Ah, I'm there. Game mode one, I wanna fly around. Oops, oh, I don't have, I'm not op on this. So Morgan, how do you get op? All right, well, let me show you. All right, so you go to your web user interface your hoopla that you just have to type in up there. It even says that we got one person on there and how much memory we're going to be using right now. Okay, no problem. So you're saying, Morgan, where's the uh, where's the terminal? Where can I do that? All right, well, you just come down here. This is your terminal. So you just type in OP. I think I remember who I named myself as. If I could just type.
There you go. Now I'm up. Check that out. Opta's Fallen Angel. So now I can do all kinds of stuff. Get up in the air. This thing runs great. See how well it runs? It runs great. Let's even make it full screen. There we go. Does look fairly good. It's fair. It's pretty good. But we're more worried about the performance of this thing. Alright, so how fast is it, can it render things? Let's just fly off in the distance here. See if, it, if the server can keep up. Now remember, this the server is running on a virtual machine. Seems to be doing pretty good to me. Look at that. Pretty good, huh? All right. So anyway, I'd say that this is pretty straightforward on this, right? So anyway, let's disconnect. Cancel. Let's minimize this. All right. So you have your all, all your stuff sitting right here, okay? No problems. Okay, Morgan, I want to run and feed the beast because regular Minecraft is boring as shit. All right. I got gotcha. you. I hear you. Let's make another one. Let's just call this Dire Wolf 20. DW20. All right. This has got a little bit more in depth than the other one. Okay. And I'll show you how to do that here real quick. All right. So make sure you got all your stuff set. Just like the other one. Create server. All right. Now what we're going to do is we got to go to your profiles. Go feed the beast. And let's just say we want this guy right here. Okay. Which is the, the, new, the newest version of Feed the Beast. Download. This one's going to take probably a little bit longer. In the meantime, you need a way to run, to initially run the jar file. Okay? So let's minimize that. Go to your putty. Alright? Or whatever SSH that you want. Okay? So let's just go, what is this? 7.3? All right, so seven three, and then you go, you go there. All right. Yes, I know it doesn't have you know the right SSH horse crap. There's just keep going. All right. Now the easiest way to do this is log in as root. Okay. Type in that password that you had that I told you not to forget. All right. Here it is. Easy, right? Now you need to know a little bit of terminal Linux terminal. This is based off of Debian Linux. So if you could mount, you know make your way around Debian Linux you probably just be just fine all right so we need to go to there which is where we're gonna go all right now once we're in there we need to go to games all right so games CD games from there we need to go to Minecraft See how I'm going with this? Minecraft. If I could just type, this would be great. All right, once we're in Minecraft, we need to look at profiles. Okay, so profiles. Once we're in profiles. Aha, uh -huh. you kind of see where I'm going with this. Dire Wolf. I don't want to type all that stuff, so I'm just going to copy it. So now we go to CD. And now we're in there. Okay, so now it gets a little bit more complicated. Now that we're actually in of where it downloaded it, and we got to make sure that it's fully downloaded. Yep, it's fully downloaded. All right, so now that it's fully downloaded, we got to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to turn off this other Minecraft server, okay? Kill it. Turn it off. It's down. See, it even says it's down. Isn't that nice? Anyway. Okay, so you come back over here. Now, if anyone's ever started up a Dire Wolf, uh, uh, Dire Wolf 20 Feed the Beast server, you know that you have to use the server start shell. Or if you're in with uh, Windows, the server start bat file. So we're in Linux. The bat file ain't going to work, so we need to use the sh one. So to get that running initially, it's dot slash. And this is all case sensitive, so you got to type it in just the way it is, all right? Server start dot sh. Oops, permission denied. 
look at that permission denied no problem now you guys can probably either use the add ch mod uh what is it i think it's ch mod plus x whoops plus x not equals x plus x and then this guy right here all right and then we can try running this sucker again hey check that out that works so you gotta let this go all right yeah you gotta you know read the eula okay so easiest way that i saw to do this is you can do uh, let's blow this up a little bit so we can see this eula text okay so nano okay and then you come down here and you gotta change false to true true morgan come on true all right then you hit control x all right do you want to save this yes i do okay file name just hit enter okay now you can go back to that server start go back to that server start okay let this thing run if anyone has ever played dire wolf you know how long it takes dire wolf to start up so in the meantime i'm gonna get my dire wolf to start up if i could just find it now i'm running six gig on this virtual machine which is probably way more than i really need to have so i'm gonna lower my dire wolf settings yeah, I'm already at 6.5. So I'm just going to give this one, eh, let's just give it, say, 2 gig. Yeah, I know it probably doesn't really like 2 gig, but eh, 2.5, that's good enough. Actually, no, let's just bump it up to 3. Let's bring, bump it up to 3. Uh, that gives the regular operating system some extras. What's going on here? Oh, it doesn't like that. For some odd reason, Feed the Beast doesn't like the stop and run and stop and run and all that kind of good stuff so I gotta stop this close this now I can open it because Java for some odd reason doesn't like two instances of fire of, of feed the beast or anything like that so we got three gig there let's get this thing started up okay is this thing going that's still going all right Now my memory is going to go way high on this one since I'm running a virtual machine and feed the beast at the same time. And it's almost done. It's almost done. There it is. Now it's running. Okay. With that running. Now what you need to do is it's going to, it's, this is a part that nobody ever told me. You never, I, no one ever told me that I needed to run that old version. I needed to run it that way because if you come in here. Come on, run. If you come in here and you just, you know, switch the profile to this, switch the profile to that, and then just hit start, nothing happens. It took me plenty of times to try and figure this out, that that's not how it runs, okay? So, with that running, you now come back over to your SSH console, and now you hit stop, okay? Type stop. And that will stop the server and then save everything that it just did. Okay, now you can just close this. Yeah, go ahead and close it. All right, so now that everything is done, you now have to copy, change your profile to this right here. Okay, copy prof uh, profile to live server files. Copy that. And let's just say we want four gig. Four gig, all right? leave this alone don't mess with it start it's gonna take a second just like it was last time all right let's get my other one running here Make sure I got three gig, that way I'm not spiking this thing. Why is it still not liking that?
There it goes. Alright, now it's going. Alright, let's go back over here. It says that it's up and it's running. It's going to take a second. What's going on here? What do we got two of them? Oh, we got two of them. I don't want two of them. Yeah, close the program. All right, so let's just wait for this thing to all get done and then get caught up and then we'll come back to it. How about that? All right, now everything got caught up to where it was, just getting ahead of myself just a little bit. But anyway, so now we got our Feed the Beast server, Dire Wolf 20, up and running. Running this version, using this much memory. That's the type of Minecraft version that we got going on and how many players we got going on. So, here it is. It's all It got all loaded and everything. So now, let's come over to here. All right, before we get into the Minecraft deal, let, let me show you one other thing here, okay? So... This is how you would upload stuff to one of those fancy places that you pay. So anyway, you have to use the same thing to upload files and bat, you know, if you want to, you know, copy files, move stuff around, whatever kind of, kind of crap, uh, you have to do it the same way using FileZilla. Okay. I like using FileZilla. You can use any kind of FTP protocol deal that you want. All right. So anyway, so you come over here, new site. Type in the site. Don't worry about your port. Make sure that's secure file transfer protocol. SSH file transfer protocol. Normal. Okay. User is root. Password is that password that you typed in at the beginning of when we installed over here. Okay. Connect. Hey, there we are. So you're now you're wondering, okay, where is the stuff that I just installed I need to be able to upload and download you know mods and ups and stuff like that and you need to be able to do all that kind of stuff so anyway when you first get to that point you need to come down here to Ver, then the games see so remember this part okay and then you can go to servers direwolf 20 is the one that we just made and now you have access to all this stuff okay you want to upload a mod throw it in the mods folder okay to get back, you got to click this little guy. Now on your FTP server or FTP software, it might be just a little bit different, but on FileZilla, this is how it works, okay? And I'm not going to go into how FileZilla works, but all you got to know is now that you can get into your uh, into your Minecraft server, you can now do whatever you got to do, okay? So there's all your information right there. So that's pretty simple, okay? So let's go down to this one over here this is the one we just made let's go in there play around now remember that this doesn't give failed to invalid session ah all right so I gotta restart my client here okay close this close all this didn't have all that crap closed all right give it a second now let's go back into it. And now, while we are waiting for our stuff, for my stuff, to load up, you're gonna want to make yourself op if that's your thing. So just come down here, make sure that you're in your right one. So Direwolf 20. Yeah, I know I clicked on the wrong thing, so sue me, okay? Direwolf 20. This is the one we're dealing with right now. It's the one that's up, right? Okay. So come down here. To your logs after you click there and you're going to give yourself op privileges okay so op your name okay you just opt yourself all right so hopefully this thing gets done pretty quick so we don't have to sit here and wait for all eternity for everything to go All right, come on, two is seven. 
But anyway, it's a nice program, all right? And you can run this completely headless. There's another thing that I'm going to show you. And I guess I could show you while I'm sitting here waiting for this hoopley hoop to get done. All right, so let's just minimize all this stuff so we got plenty of workspace, okay? So you're wondering, okay, Morgan, how do you get the virtual box to run without having to babysit it? All right, if I shut the computer down, for, according to the other uh, video that you had put up, you have to click on the virtual box to get it running. Well, you know what? I got you covered, all right? This guy right here, VBox VM Services. And I'll, you know, link in the description for the Hoopley Hood to download this one, okay? Double click on this. You got to give it a second since my computer seems to be doing a whole lot of garbage right now. All right. Basically what this does is it, it allows you to run a, a virtual machine as a service, okay? Now you can't actually like like once the service is running and then the virtual box is actually up, it actually doesn't say inside the virtual box manager that is running. It doesn't come up with this little window and saying, hey, this is what's going on. It's going to look just like this. It's going to look like it's not running at all, but it is. Trust me, it is. This is the same kind of software that I run on my server to get my Minecraft servers up and running all the time. Okay, so anyway, let's just minimize that. Yes, agree with the hoopla. Agree, you know, where you want to put it. Install. All right. Okay. Launch the tray. Yes, you want to launch the tray. Okay, so that gives down here. Okay. Now, you can't just start it because it doesn't know where it wants to go. So, easiest thing to do, come over here, open the file location. All right. And that's going to bring it up on my other monitor that I got going on here. All right, so what you're going to do is you want to come over here and you want to find the configuration file, configuration settings. All right, open this up with your edit. Okay, so we don't want this one. We don't want that. VM name. What's the name of that we had? Right? What's the name? Mine OS? Type it in just like that. Shutdown method. And I gotta remember what it is. I think it's ACPI shutdown. Okay, ACPI shut, ACPI shutdown. And I can't remember exactly how they want it coded. So let me look at this real quick. I will deal with that later. Okay, auto start. You want that? Yes. Okay. So, save it. All right. Now, this thing's up. This thing is up. Okay, so let's stop this and let the service take over. All right, well, first, let's make sure that we can actually get into the hoopla hoo, okay? There it is. That's the server we just made. Connect it. Slower than molasses in a Cheyenne winter. Come on. Come on. You can do it. I know you're doing a lot of stuff, computer, but you're just going to have to deal with it, okay? Not responding, not responding. You and you're not responding. Oh, there it is. It just took a second. All right. Hey, and now we're in the server. Now, this probably isn't going to run as well as I would like. So let's just change the game mode here so we can fly around and be Superman. All right, there it is. And now you got Minecraft Direwolf 20 uh, with auto boot. All right. And I'll show you the auto boot here in a minute. But since we just jumped into this, it's going to take a second for it to kind of figure out everything that's going on. It's got to fill up everything in the corner here with the little circle, your little radar. 
All right, but once it fills the radar, it's going to be just fine. All right, I think that's good enough. Let's run around here and see how fast it how fast it works. Seems to work just pretty good to me. Now, obviously, if you're flying around, it's it's going to load maybe just a touch slow until it finally catches its catches uh, its breath. But if you're sitting here down on the ground and you're running around, you never ever. You're never, ever, ever going to see it. All right. So, there it is. Seems to be running pretty good, don't it? Seems to be running really good. So, there it is. Running really good. All right. So, anyway, enough of that. Let's just minimize this for now. All right. So, don't type stop here. You want to go back to your dashboard. Okay. And stop it here. It does it gentle, does it all gentle like. All right. Now it's down. Okay. So let's just minimize this. Minimize all this stuff. Okay. So we want to stop this, right? So we got to bring this up. This is all just initial stuff. Once this is, once you have the, the VM box service running, you don't have to worry about any of this stuff anymore. You just click it and you just just run it and when the computer starts it starts okay so mine OS is turned off right all right so let's come down here and start the service okay now it's always a good idea and come over to your services and make sure that you have it set on automatic all right services make sure this is set on automatic here okay now, unfortunately, it doesn't really give you any indication if it's actually running or not. All right. Best thing that you can do is make sure you look at, you know, however much memory you have, say six gig. Well, you're using just about six gig. So I'm going to say that it's started to run. So come down here all the way to your VM box service. Okay. And for any reason that it doesn't start automatically, you just come over here and hit start. All right. Just start the service. Okay. Startup type automatic good to go so now we got to give this thing just a second for it to kind of catch up let's just refresh this page make sure that we can actually get into it now mine OS probably hasn't had a chance to actually get everything up and running so let's give it a second All right, now that I actually got this thing figured out, the computer just needed to restart. It was getting a little confused with everything that I was asking it to, to do. But anyway, so it's actually started up. Okay, and I'll prove it to you. Whoops, ah, that's not what I wanted. VM box. Anyway, so here we are. 192.168.173. Okay. We're going to go in here. All right, come on, start up. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. It's just, I don't like that one anyways. All right, so see it started up. It's already running. And I told, like I told you, it's not going to look like it started up from the VBox manager. All right, so it's going to say powered off, powered off. All right, so, and also I made a mistake and configuring the configuration file. Aha, surprise, surprise, right? All right. So anyway, basically how you got to have this thing set up. Go in here. This is where it, it's got to be, unless you told VirtualBox to install to somewhere else. ACPI power button for the shutdown method. Make sure that you got this name, the same name that you find here. All right. Give this a second to kind of get going here come on all right so right here show and explore it's this right here this is the exact wording that it has to have okay exact wording all right besides that you can delete this if you want leave it if you want to whatever don't matter all right but anyway it's running 
it's up it's running and to come down here whoops that's not what I wanted yeah now that's gonna make me log back in go to your dashboard direwolf 20 is the one that we're goofing around with and then you can sit here start on server boot so once the VM starts it's gonna start this okay <clears throat> All right, so now it's starting to load. Start this part, get that part going. All right, and it does say that it is running, except I don't know what that number is. Oh, now it's changed, okay. So, it does say that's running. Now we're just waiting for my client to get done here. Hopefully that doesn't take too long at all. I'm just going to refresh this page. See what it comes up with. Yep, it still says it's running. Oh, now it's going. Okay. I guess it just took a second. All right. So let's wait for this to get done. All right. So everything just got done. So back in. And it's running. Running perfectly. So anyway, that is how you do it. And if you wanted to get like one of those other mod packs in there, you'd have to do it roughly the same way. Okay. You have to start it outside. Uh, the v, uh, outside the manager the the web user interface and then copy those live files over to server folder okay uh, using that little clicky button that uh, that we did just on this one but anyway that's how you do it all right so once you get everything installed you're able to get the VM going okay once you get the VM going then you can tell the uh, the service to actually automatically boot that VM at boot alright so when the computer restarts which makes this really really good for like a home server and you know a lot of people say oh this is gonna it's gonna put a lot of load on the computer and all that stuff but you know what I've actually got on my server a uh, AMD Lanyo or however you pronounce that L L A N O Lanyo uh, a4 processor it's it's a dual core running at like 2.6 and I got 16 gig of RAM in that in that thing okay and it runs it just fine it runs it just fine all right I actually have a couple of friends that they uh, remotely connect to my computer to my server and then they play the computer uh, play the game and uh, they actually say that it's they don't really have any kind of lag or anything like that now granted if you're gonna host it over your internet you got to make sure that you got a decent enough internet I've actually got abysmal internet of 5 megabit up which is really really crappy for the area that I'm living in but that's as high as it can go they won't give you anything more if you got 10 megabit up man you're good to go all right now you're not gonna be running like 50 people on your server now that's not really what this is designed for but if you're looking for something that you and your buddies can can mess around with and you you can I would say that you are probably safe enough to actually run this on a dedicated box instead of having it on a, a, a virtual manager or a virtual box and you just go through the same steps except you just take out the virtual the virtual box that's all you do all right you just get a, a regular old computer strip all the stuff out of it you you know format the hard drive install uh, the mine OS and then you would install it just like you would install any other operating system the only thing that you're doing different from this computer from that from that computer and then this virtual box is you're taking out the auto booting uh, service that we just configured that's all you're doing because obviously the computer is gonna start up anyway and then what you can do is you can tell that computer, like if you happen to have like a power outage or something like that, you can tell the BIOS to automatically boot after the power outage. 
which comes in really handy. But anyway, yeah, if you have like a server sitting in the back room and it's just a file server, yeah, sure, throw this on it. Give it another purpose. See what you know, see what you can come up with. But um, I've loaded one of these pretty hard. Uh, I like doing a whole lot of pneumatic craft, and pneumatic craft seems to take a whole lot of stuff, a whole lot of uh, processing power to actually perform. Um, but anyway, that's how, that's how you do it. Like it if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't. And don't forget to subscribe. We'll mm. see you later.